Hello YouTube and welcome to this video based on basic unit compositions in the Age of Empires 3 Definitive Edition game. So in this game I'm going to be showing you one of, as I say, the most basic unit compositions that there is in the game. Most civs can do a version of this, for example here, I'm showing you an example of the French, but also just off the top of my head, the Portuguese can do it, the Dutch can do it, the Lakota can do it, the Haudenosaunee can do it. The Ottomans can do it, the Russians can do it, the Spanish can do it, the Indians can do it, and I'm sure there are some other ones as well, which I am not remembering right now. In the background here, we're playing an unranked game on Age of Empires 3 DE. I'm playing against somebody who I believe was playing his first ever game with the USA, but his ELO was 1350, so he wasn't too bad of an opponent to test this on. So the reason that we have unit compositions in AOE 3DE is because of the rock, paper, scissors nature of the counter system. It's quite a strong counter system and as such you need certain units to take out other units if you plan on playing at any level at all. So in this game I'm going to show you specifically probably the most common type of ranged infantry, ranged cavalry, heavy cavalry composition and that is the classic skirm hus goon or skirmisher husser dragoon combo and probably the most standard civilization to do this with is the french now i don't play that much french or at least i haven't on de played quite a lot of them on the vanilla game and the asian dynasties but not so much in de i think my home city level was nine before this game so that shows you how uh, little i've played the french but as i say my, my opponent here this was uh, his first ever game with the US, he had a level one home city, so it wasn't uh, such a bad, such a bad test again. So the thing with skirmisher Husser Goon as a combo is that two of those units, i.e. the skirmisher and the dragoon, are only available in age three, and as such, to mass with this unit composition, you need to get to age three as quickly as possible. In this game, I opted to do a semi-fast fortress. I aim to get five cavalry out first, as this helps harry the opponent and gives them something to think about in the second age before using the resources to advance to the third. So this video isn't about build orders as such, it's more about the unit composition, so I'm going to skip forward a little bit into the third age, which is where we gained access to our skirmishers and our dragoons. So you can see here that I'm raiding the, the, the US opponent, and you can see that he's got some heavy infantry there, or at least I think they're heavy infantry, because I've never actually played as the US. Um, if there are any decent players watching, then please excuse my macro. Um, I don't play the French very often. <laughs> I wasn't really too sure of the build order. I, th I think he only got four hustlers out uh, at first, so it was by no means a perfect game, but it does still allow me to demonstrate uh, the, the power of the unit composition. So we're in the third age now, and you can see I've got some skirmishers out. So we've got we've got two aspects of the unit composition so far. We have some heavy cavalry, the hussars, and we have the ranged infantry. So the heavy cavalry are weak to those heavy infantry that we've just seen there. So we need the skirmishers to move forward and take those out. I want to try and pick off the general as we're doing it. Skirmishers are very weak to cavalry, so we need to bring in the dragoons, which counter cavalry. So the skirmish is there, we get plus 100 XP for killing that explorer. Um, I don't do a very good job here of keeping my heavy cavalry alive. Um, I'm not the best player in the world, so I do struggle sometimes with APM. We managed to get a couple of vil kills there. And now we're kind of back down to two um, components of, of, the, of the composition. We have no heavy cavalry left apart from one husser, so we have Wharton. Husser, a few skirmishers and a few dragoons, but we can take out these heavy infantry with the skirmishers. Siege down a trade post, I'm not sure that that was the best option, but it's, it's what I opted to do. At this point we have skirmishers and dragoons, but if the, the opponent was to come in with a large mass of light infantry, uh, which kind of cancel out against my light infantry and destroy my ranged cavalry, then we would have a problem. We can continue to pick off the heavy infantry and then you see we, we have a, a light infantry or a ranged infantry pop and we have to get out of there because we know that without our heavy cavalry, because we only have two aspects of the unit composition at the moment, that we can't take this fight. We need some heavy cavalry. Fortunately, we have three of the best heavy cavalry in the game, or at least trainable heavy cavalry in the game on the way, the cuirassiers, and we have four 
more Husser in Q as well. So the enemy's ranged infantry really forced us to get out of there because we couldn't take that fight with our ranged infantry and our ranged cavalry. We needed the, the three-pronged attack, i.e. the heavy cavalry, to join up with the ranged infantry and the ranged cavalry. And once we have those, we can go back in. And we're going to follow up those three cuirassiers with another five hus. So at this point, we have all bases covered. He can't really throw anything at us that we can't kill. If he brings cavalry, our ranged cavalry are going to kill him. If he brings heavy infantry, our ranged infantry are going to kill them. And if he brings ranged infantry, our heavy cavalry, which we're hiding so he doesn't know that we have them, they will jump on top of them and kill them. If he brings artillery, then we have both the ranged cavalry and the heavy cavalry to kill them. So you can see I'm poking and I'm using the skirmishers range here, trying to pick off a villager, but we're not quite successful. We're just waiting for his ranged infantry to come after us because he doesn't know that we have the heavy cavalry. Although at this point I think I showed them. I probably shouldn't have showed them there. I would have been better keeping them back, but those are the, de the decisions that you make in a game sometimes which perhaps aren't the best. And at this point we see he's not taking the fight. It looks like his villagers are in the town centre. Um, and at this point he realises he, he can't fight the heavy cavalry and I, I realize that he doesn't have any heavy cavalry of his own so we don't really need the dragoons to be fighting them and he resigns because he can't kill the heavy cavalry so that that's the power of the three-pronged attack so just to be clear in this example our skirmishers our ranged infantry they kill heavy infantry i.e musketeers pikemen halberdiers rodoleros ashigaru musketeers janissaries etc etc our heavy cavalry, the Hussars and the Karassias, they kill light infantry, in this case the state militia. Also other skirmishers, strelets, Gurkhas, that kind of thing. And our ranged cavalry, if the opponent chose to make cavalry, he didn't on this occasion, but if he did choose to make cavalry, then our dragoons would have cleaned those up. And if he had brought any artillery onto the field, we would have tried to kill those with the two-pronged attack of the ranged dragoons and the melee Hussars. So if we dive quickly into another game, this game was against the Germans, it was another unranked game. Uh, I can't play ranked at the moment because my internet keeps dropping out, I think I've lost five in a row, all because my internet has dropped out. Anyway, I digress completely. This this player, he, because it was unranked, he was, he was the first player to join the game, what I'm trying to say is, is he wasn't the best player. So, so this was a slightly different game, the Germans are a more established civilization. obviously the US are very new, people are still learning the best unit compositions, the best build orders. Um, but as I say, this guy, he wasn't necessarily the best player, but it was a good example of how the unit composition in question uh, can easily win a game. So I, I did the same build as before. We did a, a, a semi-fast fortress. We built five Hussars, or I think I might have actually only got four out because my build order's off. Um, yeah, I did, there, there, there they are. We only got four out. He tried a kind of strange rush. I mean, as I say, he's not the best player. Um, I think he allowed me to kill one war wagon here. Possibly two. It was at this point I knew that he wasn't the best player. Yeah, it looks like I got two. I did indeed get two. At this point we just found four random crossbows, uh, which is a good example of how heavy cavalry kill ranged infantry. And we realise he's trying some kind of strange rush with three dops and two ulans and... Uh, four crossbows is not, not the strongest rush I've ever seen in my life, to be honest. Um, put some villages in the town centre and we'll be able to kill off these pretty easily. One of the advantages of the French, of course, is that the villagers are strong. You can pop them out of the town centre, you can take shots like this and you can kill off one or two extra units that you wouldn't be able to do with uh, standard settlers or villagers. And once the dops are gone at this point, once the heavy infantry is gone, you can bring in the cavalry. And cavalry, heavy cavalry obviously cancel out other heavy cavalry and they destroy the ranged infantry. This is kind of a precursor to uh, the bigger fight which happens later on which ultimately wins the game. I mean, you can see by the disparity in scores at this point that yes, this guy maybe isn't the best player. Um, nevertheless, we can still show the, the strength of the, the unit composition. 
So at this point we start building some skirms. We've got some heavy cavalry, the hussars again, we've got the dragoons out now, the ranged cavalry, we've got some skirms. In queue for the three pronged attack from the ranged cavalry, the ranged infantry and the heavy cavalry. So it's likely with the Germans that like, in, in, in a game against a higher quality opponent I would have come up against war wagons, uhlans and skirmishers which is just another variant of this uh, build here. Swapping out the hussars for uhlans and the dragoons for war wagons. And if we skip forward a bit just towards the fight later on we can see that the, the opponents built a wall. Um, one of the weaknesses of this build actually is that there's not much siege attack but fortunately walls in this game don't have that much health. So we can try and pick up the villagers with the skirmishers because they have big range, 20 range to be precise. He realises that so we can now start taking down the wall. And we've built a quite a mass, we've got quite a few ranged infantry, we've got quite a few ranged cavalry and we've got a few heavy cavalry. And we had more heavy cavalry there with the Carassias, same as the last game. And here we come to the fight, if I just pause it here, so it looks like he's got a mass of crossbows and as such really what we would need ideally. I mean, we're going to win this fight anyway because we've outmassed him but if it was a closer fight then we would need more heavy cavalry. At this point I think we've only got four hussars. So his crossbows, because they're ranged infantry, they're going to sort of deal effectively or trade at least kind of half well with the skirmishers and they are going to trade very well against the dragoons. So we pull back our ranged infantry, we, we put the heavy cavalry on top of the skirmishers. As I say, he's not the best player, so he, he doesn't sort of run away from the hussars as he should do. What is quite a good move from him is if we pause it here. He brings his heavy cavalry, i.e. the Erlans, across. Now they completely counter the skirmishers and they will shred them pretty quickly. So we have to bring our skirmishers to the left. We bring in the dragoons to block them on the right. And we shoot at the Ulans with the dragoons. And you see the Ulans kind of run around and they don't last very long because the dragoons really hard counter them. Then really all we're left with is the crossbows. And at this point really it is game over. It would have been a closer fight in against a more a higher calibre of opponent, but I think you can still see the strengths of the unit composition there. Crucially, what he didn't have there that we did have was ranged cavalry or anything to protect his ranged infantry. What would have protected his ranged infantry there was a few war wagons. Now, of course, he's only in age two, but had he gone to age three, then he would have been able to protect those crossbows with war wagons and that would have won in the game. So that's the difference between just having two units and three units as in three units in this case the hussars the skirmishers and the dragoons were far stronger than just the crossbows and the ulans so that is all for this video i hope you did learn something from that and if you did and you like the content please do like comment subscribe all of that business it really really does help me i will be doing some more age of empires 3 definitive edition content in the near future so please do keep an eye out for that as well thank you